Good morning and welcome to this month's IDT seminar. My name is Lawrence Shepard. I'm a product technical specialist here at Meritor. Today we're going to talk about air disc brake and we need to know that there's more to an air disc brake brake job than just replacing the pads. So we're going to look at some of our inspections areas that we think are very important and then we need to look at how to do an actual brake job and replace the pads. Okay, so some of the visual easy inspections you can do, the, you can do these with the wheels are still on, but things that we need to make sure that we look at on a regular basis is make sure that those mounting fasteners are tight and they're torqued properly. Make sure that the air chamber fasteners are also uh, torqued. You know, the air chamber needs to be properly sealed onto that caliper because it's an area where we can get moisture migrating inside the caliper if we don't have those seals secure and in place. And also the adjuster stem cap. The rubber cap that is over top of that adjuster needs to be in place and properly installed. Again, an area where we could get moisture migrating into that caliper. We also need to look on a regular basis at our visual wear indicator. Um, this is a unique indicator to Meritor. Uh, again, you can look at that with the wheel still on, just flat, you know, use a flashlight, shine it up in there, and have a look at that indicator. That indicator is broken down into 25 degree increments. So as it gets shorter, the pads are wearing, the rotor's wearing, so we need to make sure that we look at it so we know when to take those wheels off and do a further inspection. Our recommendation is if you have 75% wear or greater, then you need to have a look at those pads. You need to take the wheels off. You need to make a further inspection. So another thing that we can do just to make sure that the unit is functioning properly, we can do a adjuster check. Uh, we can make sure that our automatic adjuster is functioning properly and working well. Again, we can do that with a dial indicator. All we have to do is mount that on the axle and then put the pin of the indicator up against one of the cap ends and then take some measurements. So if we push it all the way out and then zero it and then pull the caliper unit all the way back in, we'll get our measurement. Ideally, we're looking for 60 thousandths of an inch. We have 30 thousandths of an inch clearance between the friction and the rotor surface and since we have two pads, we have a total of 60 thousandths. We allow up to 20 thousandths of an inch variance on that. So if you're under 80 thousandths of an inch, everything should be good. If you're over 80 thousandths of an inch, you should perform an automatic adjuster check. And that's very simply done. And we will show it to you here, how we have done the clearance check, a little video that just again shows you, we have it mounted onto the axle, the pin is in place on the cap, and then we're just going to move that unit forward and back and we're going to get our total measurement. All right, again, we're looking for ideally 60 thou, but we'll allow up to 80 thou. If we have more than 80 thousandths of an inch, you want to check to make sure your automatic adjuster is functioning correctly. So that's simply done by using a 10 millimeter wrench and putting it on the adjuster screw. Back it off a quarter of a turn, which is counterclockwise. Now you're going to have somebody apply the brakes for you. When they apply the brakes, that wrench should now move backward clockwise. It may not come all the way back to the original position, but it will move back. The other thing now you have to do is when the brakes are released, keep your eye on that wrench. It should not move at all. If it comes back up towards the unit counterclockwise. That means your adjuster is wearing and you need to keep an eye on that unit and make sure that it's checked on a regular basis. Again, with a little video here showing that exact adjuster check. Again, very simple procedure. Here we are putting that 10 millimeter wrench onto that adjuster screw, backing it off. Now we've applied the brakes. You see how it came back down and you'll see that when the brake pressure is released, it did not move. That means your adjuster is functioning 
100% correctly. So now we're going to look at it and say, okay, we're going to do a pad replacement. We've looked at that indicator. We're at 75% wear. We went in and had a quick look, and our pads were down. You know, and and it's it's not a brake job is not complete by just replacing the pads. There are other factors we have to look at. There are things we have to do. So when we talk about that, just doing a pad replacement, yes, it's easy. But if you're going to do a complete job, you're going to do other things. And that's what we're going to talk about now. So again, a ni nice little video just shows you how to do a pad replacement. You know, we're doing do a quick pad change. We're going to back off the unit. Remember, we got to back it off all the way because we're now going to put new pads in, which are thicker than the old pads. So we back that all the way off. We take that retaining bar off remove the clips, remove the old pads, put the new pads in and reassemble it, put that retaining bar back on and then just adjust it up and then back it off a half a turn. We've set our clearance. That is an easy pad replacement. One of the things we have to also remember and this is just to help you because I know you're not all working on Meritor units, you could be using a Bendix unit. On our set up you can just connect directly to the adjuster screw and back it off or or set it and put it forward but if you're looking at a bendix unit remember to always use the shear nut that is supplied and there's a good reason for that if you do a quick comparison you will see the two differences in the way the adjusters work where the meritor one is centrally loaded and it's big robust gears that's why we can put that wrench directly on and we don't have to be concerned about over torquing it the bendix unit is a little more delicate and because of the way it's set up they limit the amount of torque you can use to move that adjuster that's why they want that shear nut so always make sure when you're working on that bendix unit you're using that shear nut in place to do any adjustment as a rule of thumb, we recommend that when you're working on a unit, you remove the outer pad first. That will now allow you to push that caliper back and make a nice big opening to take out that inner pad. Because where the inner pad sits is also where you have your boots. Your piston boots and your slide pin boots are located in that area. And that just gives you a little more freedom of room so you're not going to cause any damage to those boots. As I said, you want to inspect them for you know, uh, uneven wear, tapered wear. Uh, inspect them to look at the quality of the friction, how it looks. And also make sure you're using those uh, pads to their full limit. The problem we have today is we've worked on shoes for so many years and we always say, well, when a shoe gets down to a quarter of an inch of lining, it's got to be replaced where a disc pad can be run down much thinner. It's a different way of fastening those pads to that backing plate which allows you to do this. There are different rules of thumb. You know, here at Meritor we will say three millimeters. Uh, other competitors have different measurements. You know, CVSA, they say a sixteenth of an inch or 1.6 millimeters is the maximum allowable wear they, they offer. So again, I kind of use a rule of thumb. Yeah, if it's thinner than a nickel, it definitely needs to be replaced. But make sure you're getting the full life out of those pads. And when you're looking at the tapered wear, you know, there's two measurements you're concerned about. End to end, you're looking at 118,000 difference. Top to bottom, you're looking at 78,000 difference. Those measurements are critical, and I will explain a little bit later where those measurements come from. We've got our pad out, we're looking at different things. So, so now we want to check. Say we had that uneven wear um, and we want to make sure that the caliper is functioning properly and we don't have any wear in our bushings or problems with our pins. So we can do a lateral wear check. Again, very simple to do. We just can hook it up onto the hub and put it up against the unit with a dial indicator. We're going to move it side to side and we're going to look for 
that total uh, movement of that unit. So again, I can show that to you in a video here where we've done that. We have it up against the bridge area. We're rocking it back and forth, side to side. We're getting that movement and we are looking for, again, under 118 thousandths of an inch. If it's greater than that, we're going to have to move along and check the bushings or the pins to see if we have wear, which is causing that uneven pad wear. We do the exact same thing for that radial wear where we're looking at 78 thousandths of an inch movement. Again, we can just mount that uh, dial indicator onto the hub and then we can put the uh, pin from the indicator on the top of the bridge. We want the spacing between the rotor and that bridge to be about three quarters of an inch. Again, now we're gonna rock that unit up and down and we're going to take that total measurement. Again, we want it to be under 78 thousandths of an inch. Again, a little video here showing how that was done. You can see where the dial indicator is mounted. And then we check in that measurement, make sure we got the proper distance from the rotor to the bridge area. And then we're going to rock that unit up and down, up and down. Get that total measurement. Again, we are looking for under 78 thousandths of an inch. So why do we have those tolerances? Why do we have the 118 thou and the 78 thousandths of an inch movement tolerances? It is the way that we control the slide pin distortion. Okay, if you were to think about the pins themselves, they are fastened at one end of the pin. Just like any time you have heat involved, metal can expand. So those pins could actually start to separate and move out on a slight angle because of that heat distortion. This oval design that we have on our short pin allows that freedom of movement. Okay, it stops the unit from binding up on itself. It makes sure it still floats freely back and forth. We have that oval bushing. It's the short, uh, on the short pin, you'll notice it, it's a heavier, uh, bronze type bushing there. Our competitors have different ways of doing it. Uh, some of them use a rubber resistance to, to help with that deflection. Some of the lighter units, mainly the single piston units, which don't have a, the heat build up that the dual piston units do, uh, don't have anything at all because they don't have that distortion. Again, we'll show you the fact that this is what we call a floating caliper and we want this unit to move very freely back and forth anytime you've got the pads out and you grab onto that caliper it should just slide easily back and forth and you know it should be got moved very very freely on those pins if it doesn't then we might have an issue we might have uh, you know corrosion build up somehow on the slide pins we could have damage to the carrier which is causing it to bind up so we want to make sure that that unit travels freely back and forth. Here's showing that bushing and I, I want to let you know because of that oval shape you need to install it correctly. If you look at the bushing itself it has two grooves cut into the side of the bushing and a lot of times people think those are for grease relief. They are not. Those grooves are there to help you align the bushing. Now it's not one of these things where you got to get in there with a measuring tool and make sure it's perfect. You just want to use those visually so that bushing as is close to the horizontal on those two guidelines as possible. That gives that unit that freedom of movement, stops any chance of any binding up. So you've had to do a uh, repair on those pins. You've had to go in there and you've had to look at remove the boots and then replace them and lubricate those pins. I should say at this time that's the only time you will put lubrication on this unit. Anytime you remove the caliper from the pins you must put lubrication back on those pins and you must use Meritor's lube. Okay? We supply our lubrication in every one of the repair kits, whether it's just a boot repair kit or a slide pin repair kit, those, that grease is in there. 
please just use our grease. Our competitors are the same. They recommend you only use their grease. So do that. Okay, so you've done that repair and you thought, oh, good, I got those boots put on. And, and those boots aren't easy to install. You know, they're very uh, thin, flexible, silicone type rubber um, that <clears throat> need to go into their mounting grooves, need to be put on correctly. And there's a chance you might actually tear them. So you can do a very, very easy check. If you take that unit and then s fully go inboard with the unit, pull it back, that boot will cause a vacuum and suck down right onto the pin. And what you would do is you just sit there and count to 10 and watch that and you would understand that you have no leaks. If it doesn't come back up, you've done a really good job installing that boot. This video again just shows it. If you look up at the upper part just under the bridge, you can see that boot. It's collapsed. It's pulled down onto the pin. You know, do that count to 10. It didn't expand back up. Perfect. There's no tears or pinholes in that boot and it's properly seated on its mounts. Again, the same thing with the piston boots. You need to inspect them. You need to make sure they are installed correctly. I, you know, sometimes they're difficult to get in there. Sometimes, you know, it's hard to see underneath the bottom. Uh, I know certain times I've seen mechanics who actually use like a dental mirror and reach under there and make sure that uh, everything is ins installed correctly. But if you get them on properly, again, you're not going to have any issues, any damage. Those, uh, those pistons are going to be properly sealed. Here we go with another little video showing that inspection, looking at it, the way it goes. As you can see, this boot here that he's working on is properly set. It's all in the right place. Everything's there. And of course, the other boot is off of the mount. It needs to be put on. It needs to make sure that it's sealed all the way around, 360 degrees, to make sure that happens. Another area of inspection, when you've got those pads out, is you need to look at what we call the abutments. There are eight abutments in that carrier section of your caliper assembly. They are what hold the pads. That's why it's called the carrier. They carry the pads and they sit up against those abutments. They wear sometimes or we have issues where we have maybe the wrong pad put in and we cause damage to those abutments. Here's some pictures of excessive wear where these abutment areas have got worn and you need to look at them. As a rule of thumb, what I do is I look down there and I take my fingernail and I just drag it across that abutment surface. If it doesn't hang up, then everything's good. A little minor wear, a little marking in that isn't gonna cause any issue, but when you have excessive wear, the pads will hang up. They will cause uneven wear on the pads they could also cause noise issues. There's many different things. So make sure you look at those abutments, make sure you check and make sure they are good, clean, and will allow the pads to slide freely. Just finishing up here today, I also want to remind you of our Literature On Demand website. This is a great resource for everybody out there. Every publication that Meritor has is on this website. There's the link right up there written down if you want to uh, write it down. Or you can go to uh, Meritor Parts Express and you can go in there and look at the, uh, there's a link as well for Literature On Demand. But as I said, every publication is there. Everyone is also there on a PDF format. So you have instant access to maintenance manuals and other reference material, tech tips, things of that nature. Hopefully will make your job easier and you can now, you know, utilize that resource. So this is Lauren Shepard, Product Technical Specialist. Thanks for attending and have a great day.